Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow Creator 333 with another game of Acron for you. This time, a 2v2. Family managed to get 2v2 games working on here, so we should be seeing some pretty exciting action. So, we have here on red team, Trillion Eyes, who has yet to choose her race. We have a Tron, who is playing CISO. We have Ipswich playing Vekgear. And we have Saucy's playing Grecon. So just so you know, Saucy's and Ipstitch are allied, and Kron and Trillionize are allied. So it's a boys versus girls match here in Boreal Cliffs. So let's see what we're doing. So it looks like both players, or all players, are going for a pretty standard economic start. We have, yeah, no one's really going for anything too daring. Everyone's just going building up resource processors. Actually, it looks like. Trillion Eyes is actually going for slightly offensive strategy. It looks like she's actually going to scout out everything. It looks, I think these marines, at least one of them, is probably going to be used to build resource processors in the middle. But it looks like she's going for a fairly aggressive start. Though she may have changed her plans earlier on. No, it looks like even back in the past, she's not doing too much different. She's just... Yeah, so it looks like Trillion Eyes is going for a rather aggressive start. This should be very interesting. Although, I'm not sure... I think she can see where, where Kron is, but I'm not 100% sure. There were some changes in the recent version. Allies don't automatically see each other, so hopefully people have actually shared data with each other. They can see what they're doing, but I don't know for sure. So at this point, Kron is scouting out Ipstitch, and it doesn't look like anyone else is doing any scouting. So the girls' team is starting out in a bit of a lead with the scouting here. It doesn't look like the boys' team has much in the way of intel, but I'm not sure how this is going to go because at this point they are going to figure out that both that the girls' team are playing CISO, so it looks like we're going to have a pretty interesting startup. Trillion Eyes still hasn't looked at it actually built anything economic, but maybe... In, ah, I see. Nice. So Trillion Eyes is actually going for a complete fake-out. She's actually switched to Grecon, and she's going to be going for a total Grecon build instead. And at this point, she seems to be going more economic. She's getting a Faro. She's going to be using that to get Octos to get resource processors, while the other three players are still being, building... Con actually, you know what? No, they are building some economy, but actually it looks like... No, never mind. Okay, the economy is being built. Looks like Saucy's hasn't quite realized you can actually build resource processors with Octos. He's just building the Octos to begin with. But, looks like, yeah, it looks like Trillion Eyes is going for a very tricky strategy. So people are going to be, this is actually the first time I've ever seen someone actually use the fact that you can change your race after you start the game to their advantage. But it'll be interesting to see how this works out. There is a big cost in Chrono Energy because you have to be changing your actions in the past. But it's a very interesting strategy, but very interesting to see how it works out. So it looks like Kron isn't doing too much aggressive either. She's just doing some scouting herself. And Trillion Eyes, like I said, still here. Once this red time wave comes, she will become a Grecum again. So now she's Grecum. So as it is, no players, like I said, are really going for anything too aggressive. They are actually... Let's see. It looks like Kron and Trillion Eyes haven't shared vision yet, so they're going to have to do in that soon. And at this point... So, so Ipstitch is going for a fair or Ipstick, sorry, is going for a fairly fairly standard vector opening with Depot and Annex. Well Annex is default, but Depot. And let's see, back in where where he is at three minutes twenty-two seconds, his depot is done, he's building up a Zion Pulsar. So fairly basic. He's not doing anything too drastic, too daring. He's just building up some basic vehicles. So at this point it looks like Kron and Trillion Eyes are focusing quite a bit on the past, and Kron's going for, or sorry, Trillion Eyes is going for a rather economic build, but is sending an Octo out to scout again. I guess people, at this point people will figure out that she has actually faked them out and is going for Grecon. While Kron is going for a rather forward factory, he's going for an interesting proxy factory build. So taking the center map control very quickly. I don't know if she'll be able to hold it very well because that is a risky move, but if she manages to hold it off, she'll be in a very good position, put her team in a very good position as well. And at this point, the boys' team is staying completely in the present, and at this point, they are... Well, the Vecure player, Ipstick, is going for center expansion as well, but nowhere near as strong, nowhere near as aggressively as Kron is. We'll figure that out in the next time wave comes. But, looks like... Yeah, Saucy's is going for a rather economic build as well. He's still building up a lot of Octos. He's, looks like he's sending them out... Yeah, he's sending them out to the center here, between the Allies expansion. Does have a reef, getting advanced structure, so he's probably going to get a spire pretty soon, be able to build some advanced pod class units, advanced air units. And now we see Kron's factory has propagated to the future. Now back, see, about two minutes ago, 
where Kron and Chilean are actually doing their thing. Kron's building up quite a few Lancers, so looks like she's going for a pretty aggressive Lancer rush, and this is a very good strategy, especially for a proxy factory. It's very, very tough to fight off if you don't have a preparation for it. But it looks like... And it looks like that Boys team does not have a preparation for it. They don't have really anything apart from Octos and some Zyndbeer and Tethbeer. I mean, the Tethbeer will help a bit, but against three Lancers, that's not going to do too much. So the first Lancers come out... Well, first Lancers come out in 3 minutes 30 seconds, so it's a bit behind where Kron actually is. Where Kron actually is, she actually ha looks like she has a few more Lancers. I'm just going to go back. So we're back at about 340. She's sending out some Lancers to scout out, make sure she has map control. She's building a macro fab as well, so she's got some advanced structures going on. So she's really climbing up the tech ladder here. And as I mentioned before, the boys team is still in the present. Let's go back to around where they were before, about four and a half minutes, or almost five minutes. And it looks like advanced structures is researched, and there's going to be Seppi's building up. There's no Faro's yet, or at least, oh, there's one Faro here. So the Faro's coming up, I'm guessing he's probably going to go for Spire. I'm just going to jump ahead in about ten seconds or so. And it looks like, no, the Faro has not been used to build Spire, maybe ten seconds later. No, it looks like even 10 seconds later, then still, the fire is not being used to build anything yet. It might be pretty soon, though. It looks like... There we go. Okay, now the fire is being built. And at this point... Okay, so at about 6 minutes in, looks like Ipsic actually has figured out that Kron is building a factor, but Kron already has the stuff built up. She already has... I mean, the base is pretty strong. But now Ipsic is actually going back to the past, going to meet up with Kron about 4.5 minutes into the game. And Kron is building... Like I said, has been building up this factory, has been building up Lancers, and actually building up Mar tanks as well to fend off forces that are coming up, and these Lancers are just harassing the Zion Pulsar, because Zion Pulsar cannot attack air. The Zion Virgo can, so now the Lancer can be there can be retaliation, but that's not gonna last too long. So back with just to check up on what Saucy is actively doing. He does have a spire back when he is, but it doesn't matter so much because the fight is going on early in the past. Kron, for her part, is building up more forces on her own timeline. Trillion Eyes looks like she's just going for a rather defensive posture. She's just building up some advanced units, trying to get, probably going to get Leo class pretty soon, if she hasn't already. And as for the, let's see, as for Vekir, Ipstick, he is going for, okay, this is the attack he was going for that we saw about a couple minutes ago. Looks like, so the attack's coming in, taking out the Lancer, and is going to be coming into the main base to try to take out units that are there. But the Mar tank that Kron built a couple minutes ago is now going to be a bit more handy this time around. So this is the second time we're seeing this, and it looks like Kron's Mars tank is going to be doing a fair amount of damage. The time loop's going to come over, that sh might change things a little bit. It looks like there were actually two Mars tanks, I'm just going to go back to where this battle actually started. So, once again, here we have about six minutes into the game. So, at six minutes, once again, the Faro did start building a Spire, so... Saucy's is getting a bit better of position to protect, but Ipstick is attacking, but he's getting a quite a bit of damage done to him. Kron, of course, knew the attack was coming, so she went back, changed it again, so Ipstick has pulled back the attack, he's not going to bother going with it, and instead Kron is going to be just having a nice position here. She, once again, she still has a forward position, and it looks like, at the same time, Trillian Ice is trying to take advantage of the forward position that Kron has gained for the team. She's actually also, wow, Trillian Ice also infiltrated the base quite well, so Trillian Ice is also going to be in a good position to help attack, so the girls team is doing quite well for themselves at this point. Looks like the boys team is going to have to really push back. They're going to have to take advantage somehow of time. They're going to have to go back and undo something. Because I, mean, I don't even know if they know that the middle section has been scouted out by Trillian She knows everything that's going on in there. And, I mean, Ipstick can't expand to the center, or the center here, but he can't expand the area between the two bases. That's not going to be much good for him either. So it looks like, at this point, Trillian is, is taking advantage of the center. She's pushing forward as well. She's got her attack going. Actually, that happened a little while ago. So yeah, she's got her attack going about six almost seven minutes in, and the Octopod is actually doing pretty well. I mean, the Teth Pulsars are complete anti-air units. They can attack ground, but no near, nowhere near as well as the Octopods can. So, the Octopods are doing quite well for themselves, pushing in.